Hi everyone, Paul and Sam, welcome to another video. Before we get going today, make sure you sub to the channel, hit the little bell notification, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below should you wish. All the products you see me using in my build videos are all in the description down below. You can click it, it'll take you to a big long list over on the forum and you can find them linked over there. So, this isn't a video I ever plan to make or a review I plan to do, but so many of you have asked about reference uh, sources, um, the pit lane books, where can I get them from. So I thought I'd do a quick video today. I've got a few different things I use for reference, my opinions on them, a quick look through them, and we'll have a look and see what we've got. Now the pit lane books I'm going to show you are a bit of a pain to find. Um, they're out of print, they fetch absolutely crazy money on eBay, you're talking over £100 a book. But to me, they are the uh, best reference for the MotoGP bikes, bar none. Um, you're not going to get any closer or personal with the bikes. And for me, I'm very, very glad I have these books um, because they're really difficult to find. So if you're looking for them, as I say a little bit in a minute, I know a source that's got them in stock or it's saying they're in stock, but a few friends of mine are looking to get them. So as soon as I made sure they are going to get them, I'll put the link in the description. I can't be held accountable they're not in stock. It says they are. They take PayPal, so you are protected. It's in Japan, so you may get import fees as well. But if you're a serious MotoGP modeler, these things are well worth the money, as you will see in a minute. So I've got a selection of them. I was very, very lucky to find a number of years ago. Long story short, everyone's like, oh my God, you've got so many bikes in the books and aftermarket. There's a reason I have. I was big into armor at one time, and I had... Dozens and dozens and dozens of Dragon Armour kits, which, you know, they're worth quite a bit of money. Some of them, you know, I have one that's worth 250 quid. Um, I got bored of armour and I sold every single one. And I ended up with a lot of money selling them on. Uh, I got all my money back, basically, for them. I built one or two bikes and I thought, you know what, I really enjoy these bikes. I'm going to invest the money in these bikes, aftermarket, tools for the bikes, reference material, and I did. And I bought so much stuff, it's crazy. I've not got it all now. I've moved on a lot of the detail upsets because the detail upsets detract from the build a little bit for me sometimes. Um, it can drag it on. But, you know, I've got a nice bike stash up there now, 30-odd bikes, loads of aftermarket, loads of reference material. And that's what I did. I sold on some model kits and reinvested it in others. Um, so I'm lucky enough to have picked these up at the right time when I had a bit of spare money and I paid a good price for them. So, that's that. If you can get them, I highly recommend getting them. Like I said, there's a couple of other sources as well. I'm going to have a little bit of chat about using the internet for a resource too. Let's go overhead. Let's have a look at the books. Okay, so let's start off with my main reference and my favourite reference source as well. You heard me talk about these in the bike build uh, videos, and this is it. So, I looked out and I got, um, I think it's basically all of them. Um, all six, is it? Are the Pit Walk Photo Collection books. Um, I got these for a pretty reasonable price. I think I paid about £300 for them all. Maybe two, two fifty. It seems like a lot of money, but these are going for 100 quid a piece now, which is crazy. Um, and I got a couple more for free with them. Well, they weren't free, I paid for them. Um, so they start off, um, they're, they're done by year, basically. So this is GP and um, GP500. So this is before we went, they went two strokes, and this is going to lead us up to 2003. Um, so these are the earlier bikes not some of my favourite bikes I watch MotoGP a lot back in this era um, so some of the bikes yeah I, I love the look of them I don't like the I prefer the four stroke to the two stroke I think is what I'm trying to say um, I just prefer the mechanical look inside of the four stroke um, but you know I've got a couple of them in the stash and this will get used and as all these pit lane books are they are phenomenal reference. Um, so that's the Motor GP 500 GPs. Then we've got 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007. And as you'll see, a couple of mine are still sealed. 2005 and 2007. They're not opened yet because I haven't made a bike from that era just yet. Uh, 2006, um, I have. 2005, um, I start making the Decimus of DC. Um, and I will go back and never finish it, but I will restart and redo it. And 2003, I've made as well. So, if we pick one, we'll go with the one I'm currently using at the minute. 
for the current bike build. And we'll just have a quick look through and I'll show you what's in there. Now what I like about these is these are made for the modeler and you'll see why in a second because they show the model kits in there which is the main part of this that I love. Um, it's an excellent reference of all the kits from 81 all the way up to 2006 on this one. Uh, 2007 are the later bikes. There's one I'm building right now. And I think that basically, I think that covers most of the race bikes um, Tammy makes in that period. So it's a good reference, you know, use your checkpoint, whatever, but it's a good physical uh, reference as well. Now, Japanese books, I believe you read back to front. I don't know if it's the same with this. I'm going to say it's not because mm, I'd say it wasn't. So we're going to start the front. So these books are very well coveted by me um, and well taken care of. And I think they are just amazing references. All the books there. So we haven't got quite them all. But I think I've got all the ones that I want. Because these are specific bikes. So Yamaha Wise are 500 and it's 500 and it's R500. Although I actually wouldn't mind that one to be fair. And Suzuki RG, uh, that's 7486. So there's a few more books out there. Getting to find them is a bit more difficult. So we're going to move from on the project leaders. It's all in Japanese. A beautiful pick of a ZXRR. I think it's a ZXRR, it looks like one. Must be. Very cool on adverse, CBR 600. And here we go, straight into the Honda RC211V, um, which is the bike we're currently building. So these are all the, the bikes shown in all the different rounds of that season <clears throat> from different factory riders. Uh, we've got LCR Honda, uh, so on and so forth, all different schemes and setups and what have you. And then we get into the, uh, the meat as such. Sounds a bit wrong saying that, but I guess that's what it is. And this is a full-blown studio shot of the MotoGP bike. Um, absolutely lovely. Nicky Hayden's bike. Very, very nice. And as you can see, those reference pictures are just absolutely amazing. Uh, it's a full photo studio with and without the fairings on. And to me, there is literally no better reference in these books. They are absolutely amazing. We've got both sides. Full detail straight in, as you can see, with them about the fairings. And it just it's just amazing. It really, really is. Then we've got a couple more studio shots, and then we've got shots outdoor. Uh, now what I like is usually these books are all Japanese. These aren't, these are half Japanese, half English, so it is there. Should you want to read it? And again, you know, it's a fantastic source of info. Now, one thing you're going to have to bear in mind, obviously, is different riders. Things change throughout the season. Pick your reference, stick with it, and make sure when you're referring back and forth, you're not looking at a different bike, because things change. Different riders have different things on there. And it's well worth just double-checking. But as a reference picture, I mean, there's the front disc. We use ours as reference when we're building ours up in the video build. Front shocks, front caliper. This is literally some of the best reference you will see, uh, in my opinion. Um... Try and get that light off for you. But as you see, it's literally right up in there. Absolutely phenomenal pictures. The pictures are amazing. The text is very useful as well. It's telling you all the differences and um, things that change on the bike as well. And just for literally reference pictures, these are unbeatable in my opinion. Uh, you see different changes. Um, the bottom of the sump on this is different to the one I'm building. Uh, I think that's Hayden's bike still. I think it is. Yeah, it is. Um, I think it tells you here why Nikki had the different sump. It does somewhere. Then we've got the engine out of the bike. Um, so again, it's probably going to look a bit different than the actual bike because this is a display one by the look of it. Uh, but again, useful reference. You can see the different colour tones, the changes, bolt heads, so on and so forth. And here we've got the picture of the engine outside as well. I'm trying to get rid of that glare for you. There we go. And again, close up, nice clear reference. Um, and then we've got a different picture of it installed in the bike. And exhaust, you can see the beautiful heat stain on the bottom of the exhaust. They are just amazing, amazing detail all the way through from your foot pegs. 
chain, rear suspension, rear wheel. To me, these things are invaluable. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, I'll just skip forward a bit. Racing seat, we're on to, um, is that Danny Pedroza's bike 26? I think it is, isn't it? So again, it's the same bike, but a slightly different variant. And again, it goes through it all and shows it all in different uh, pictures. And again, we go through, closer look. So again, when you're looking at the bike, if you're pick, picking a specific rider's bike, pay attention to the differences, because on this, I almost guarantee it's got a different sump. There you go, it hasn't got the uh, fins on it for cooling. Um, so there are subtle differences. Now, obviously, I'm not making this bike. I'm doing the LCR Honda, so I've had to use reference pictures that are at the back a little bit. There's a couple of pictures of the bike. Um, there we go. So we've got a couple of pictures which I'm using from a distance to look and see if there is any physical difference. Is the exhaust the same? Is this the same? Is that the same? And for the most part, it is. Um, We've got the Telefonica bike, uh, sorry, the Canica Monolta, not the Telefonica, which I built as well. I've just bought this scheme for the same bike, um, but building now because obviously I have to use the decals in our build. So I've got that one to do at a later date. And then we've got the scale drawings as well. Um, so we've got Nicky Hayden, Danny Pedroza, uh, we've got Marco Melandri, uh, Tony Elas, probably killed that name, Ma <laughs> Makoto. Tamata, there we go. Casey Stoner, which is the bike we're doing now. Absolutely love that thing. Absolutely beautiful looking bike. Looks about 13 years old there. And then we're on to uh, the YZR M1s. And again, it'll go through the different schemes that year. And it's a repeat of that. Each bike is broken down like this. Different riders, different views. And as a reference, these things are unbeatable. They really are. Now, I did find a link of somewhere that had them pretty cheap the other day. I passed it on to a couple of friends. I'm going to check that they've managed to get the bikes they want. This is a possible next build for me, the uh, Decimus Adichie. Um, I'll make sure they've got theirs, and when I know they have, I'll put the link in the description down below. That's not being horrible, but obviously I found it for them, and um, I want to make sure that uh, they get theirs first. But again, as a reference, phenomenal ZXRR, I've built that as well. I use this as the reference on that um, and did all the wiring for it, all the connectors, everything, and they're just unbeatable. So, like I say, you've got each season from 2003 to 2007. I wish to bring out some more, uh, but they're a good reference. They're not cheap. Like I say, they cost about 300 quid, uh, but with two of them, I bought them as a set of four, two of those and these two as well. Now, these are different. These are all in Japanese. So... If you want to translate any of this, you have to use your phone to scan the text, which does work quite well. Now, some of the work in these is just out of this world. Um, these are not real bikes. These are models, and they're just amazing. Absolutely beautiful pieces of work. But sadly, it's all in Japanese. So if you find a specific section you want, uh, you have to translate it. But the pictures, pictures you know, speak a thousand words, as they say. And uh, I got these for free. I didn't intend to buy these. They came with the Moto GP bikes. I think I paid 120 quid for all four. That's a bargain to me. I'd have paid that just for the Moto GP bikes books. Um, so this is a little extra. But it goes through techniques, how to do things, making your own sprocket, which is really cool. Um, lots of cool info, exhausts, but some of the bike builds are just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, they're very, very cool books. So. Yeah, this is more of a, I kind of call it a coffee book table. It's not something to use as reference. Uh, I just pick her up every now and then if I'm bored or looking for something to look at. Um, it's a good book to read while you're on the toilet, shall we say. Um, but some of the work in there is absolutely beautiful. As you see, you've still got the tab in there. So, yeah, if it was translated, it'd be a lot easier to use. But, you know, if I see something, then cool, have they done that? You, you can get apps on your phone, you scan it, and it'll translate it for you. So you can read it. It's a shame it's in Japanese, but the pictures are there, and some of the work's beautiful. I built that kit a long, long time ago. Um, really enjoyed it and sold it, and I regret selling it. I think it's something I need to revisit for sure. Uh, it's a lovely kit to build that RC166. And there we are, so that's that book. So, yeah, basic modelling, I suppose, it is in there. And then we've got this one as well, and this one, the work in this is just phenomenal. 
Uh, again, we're going through all the motorbike kits. So all different manufacturers, different styles of bike. Bunch of GPs all the way through. There's the Honda RC 166. There's a Ducati in here, which is just stunning. Got Yamaha Wise F750 is lovely as well. And again, good reference. You know, pictures are good. They are a good reference. You don't always need to read the text. It would be nice to have it, but sadly we can't. It's just one of those. Desmond Adichie again, absolutely beautiful build. Lovely. But he's had the same trouble I had on mine. Bleed through the decals, through the red. I, it's the main reason I stopped building mine. Mine was all on its way. The bodywork was done. It was decaled. I added the extra Ducati decals, the Marlboro decals, sorry, on the side from Renaissance, and they bled through like you wouldn't believe. Uh, and I can see it happen here to this guy, um, which is a real shame. But uh, why is it there? Fiat uh, M1 Rossi's bike, absolutely stunning, beautiful, beautiful build. And again, these are references. Now, one thing I would say is, don't just use models as reference. Um, things get lost along the way or changed, like I've done in my bike build. I'm doing things the way I want to do it, not necessarily to the the way it should be done. So, don't just use a model as reference. Use real life pictures. Never solely use a model as reference. But to have a look, you can see, like, oh, that's a nice colour, I like that. Maybe it shouldn't be that colour, but it looks a bit better. It gives a bit more visual interest. But that's a stunning bike right there. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, 04 uh, Wise Down M1, Rossi's bike again, the Gouars bike. Uh, one of my favourites. Love all the Repsol Hondas. The kit, I need to get this. I had this and sold it. It's the O2 bike, and it's a nightmare to find. I foolishly sold it a while back. I should have kept it. And, oh, idiot. Uh, NSR 500, beautiful. And as you see, it goes through. Bikes, got some road bikes, got some techniques again. And again, this isn't a book I got and buy. This is just absolutely stunning. I love this uh, Yamaha. I've recently found the decals to make this bike. And I'm considering getting them. I just don't know what's changed between the 09 and the 11. Hoping it's nothing really. But that's a beautiful looking scheme on that. Absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, like I was saying, these weren't books I went out to buy. They came basically through the MotoGP books. And I've always kept them because I just always thought there's some great reference in there. Some techniques. I've got no idea what they're going on about. But if I want to, I can translate it and have a look. Decaling. So on and so forth. Making your chain. He's masked it up there. Hand painted it. Oh, okay. Different way of doing it than I did it. Works just as well though. And that's it. So again, good reference books. Um, well worth a look. There's another book out there as well. I bought this a while back. It's Tamiya's um, How to Build 112 Motorcycles. Now, I was a little bit disappointed by it. Um, there's some good tips in there. Um, I would have preferred if we'd got a bit of a MotoGP bike on the go in there rather than a road bike. But there's some good tips. It goes through. This one costs about, I think you can get it for under 20 quid, I think it is. 20 pounds. Um... If you're new to bikes, it might be worth picking up because it'll give you a few useful tips. Um, for me, I've not really gleaned all that much from it. It's something else in the collection. Um, there's a lot to read on this. So if you like actually reading books, a lot of them use them as a physical reference. It's a good book for that. Uh, I will sit and read it one day. But as a reference book, meh, picks aren't as useful for me. But it's still worth getting, still worth having in the arsenal. Now, another thing I've found useful as well, if you know the bikes you're going to be building, um, have a look for old Tamiya model magazines on eBay, because a lot of the bikes are covered in builds in there. You can pick these up for a couple of pounds on eBay. Um, I went through, um, through back issues of Tamiya and figured out which ones I needed, and I bought it originally for the, uh, why is the, uh, the ZXR Ninja I built. And, you know, it's not a bad, not necessarily reference, but it's a good look through how somebody did something. Um, I looked at a lot of this on mine. And to be honest, some of the things that were done, not criticising the build, I didn't do on mine. For me, the engine colours were slightly wrong to my references in the books. I go by the books, not other pictures, because things change so much. Um, but it's still pick up a couple of good tips. You know, a couple of pounds here and there. It's a beautiful build at the end, though. Um, for a couple of pounds, they're a worthwhile uh, investment to have a look. So if you go through old um, 
eBay auctions or listings of Tammy model magazines. They're normally shown on the front cover of the bike builds. You can see them. And, you know, if you're building a specific bike, if you're building the Ducati Decimation Dici, um, so on and so forth, or the YZR M1, you can pick the build, have a look through. Ooh, RS200, lovely. Um, you can pick the build, have a look through. I'm not looking at RS200 now. <laughs> um, you can pick the build, have a look at it, use as a reference. Beautiful build again, really, really nice. So again, references, pit wall photo, photo collection. So it just shows you. Um, and again, it's a good reference to see whether you like the colours next to each other or if you're going to change it and, and so on and so forth. So it's a useful reference. The internet's a useful reference. The problem is um, you need to make sure. Oh, that's nice. Um, oh, they're lovely. Uh, so I got sidetracked. Just ignore me a minute while I have a look at this. Um, the internet's a very, very good resource. Just make sure you're looking at A, proper MotoGP bikes and not rebuilt ones. Not ones that have been restored or changed. Look for original ones. Original MotoGP bikes are kept spotlessly clean, like immaculately clean. Um, anything that's showing loads of wear or whatever has probably been raced afterwards, um, you know, by a sole, a privateer kind of thing. So just make sure it's still got original parts if you're using parts for reference. Um, have a look around. But there's, there's loads on there. The other thing with the internet is um, you, you're going to get a lot of um, what's conflicting advice as well because people do things in a different way. Um, so just be aware of that as well. To me, those books are my sole reference. I will go and have a little look around on the internet if I do. Uh, need any extra um, opinion as such. But for me, I like using those books. That's beautiful, that. But again, the model magazines are a cheap resource as well. You can pick them up cheap on eBay. Um, I think I pay like two, three pounds for each of these. I know it seems a lot, but they're immaculate condition. And although this one's like 13 years old, it's still a good read, you know. And it's good to see old stuff in here, old adverts and um, models that have just come out. And, you know, it's still beautiful work. So even though it's an older magazine, you can still take a bit away by having a read of it as well. And there we are. So that's basically all the reference I use on my bikes, all the books I've got, and uh, so on and so forth. There we go then. As you can see, um, plenty of different references there. Some are cheap, some are free. The internet is basically, once you paid your service provider, it's free to look at. And the internet is a good resource. Just make sure what you're looking at because I've done things wrong. And trust me, on a bike, it can be seen, massively seen. So make sure you double check everything you're doing and confirm that it's the correct bike. It's not being restored. Like I've just said, just double check everything. The books to me are by far the best research uh, and reference material. They're so in-depth, so close up with the real bikes that you're not going to get any better reference. And to me, it looks like they were done literally in the pit lane at the time of those seasons. So... I don't think you're getting any better than that. The magazines are a good reference, but again, using a, a model as a reference. Don't ever use a model as a reference. Double check it with the real thing. You can use it for inspiration or ideas, but don't use it as a be-all and end-all reference. Even my bikes, I'm pretty... I try to be as accurate as possible, but I do change things for my own look or personal preference. And, you know, if you do that for that, you might not like the look. You might prefer the original. So double check everything before you go through. But that's it. So I hope that's answered a few questions. Like I say, if you can't find those pit walk books, get them. They're not cheap, but they're well worth the money for sure. So there we go. Hope it wasn't too boring. Loads of people have asked, so I thought I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a video on them. And uh, hopefully that's answered a few questions. And, you know, you can have a look at a few pics yourself and get a bit of reference from them for free. Um, and that's that. So there you go. As always, check out the Sasha Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, my Paul ISM Facebook page, live at the bench page for the live show. Off air hangout for the art off air hangouts. If you're not sub, sub, click the little bell notification, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I answer every single comment. If you've got any questions, whatever about these books, let me know and I'll try and help you. Thanks for watching today. I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye bye.